In this session, we're going to look at a custom subassembly part that creates a variable daylight slope. As you can see, I've got a drawing open on my screen. Let's do a quick tour. Right here, I have a surface called EG. Right now, it's just displaying as a boundary. I also have a corridor on screen. This corridor is divided up into three regions. We can see the assemblies being used in those regions up at the top. Let's zoom in on this one on the left. This is the first assembly. It contains a standard road with curb and gutter and sidewalk. More importantly, we've got daylights to the left and right. These are at six to one slope. Cut and fill for both sides. If I come down to the last region in the corridor, here's the assembly being used for that region. Basically, it's the same road and sidewalk geometry, although in this case, I've got a one to one daylight slope on the left and right, whether we're in cut or fill. The middle region, utilizes this assembly. Same road and sidewalk, except in this case we don't have any daylights to the outside. So the design challenge is to create a daylight that transitions from a 6 to 1 slope to a 1 to 1 slope over this distance. Historically, in situations like this, you may create the variable daylight slope using a grading object or maybe some feature lines. Well, we now have another option. We can do it through the use of a custom subassembly part. Let me bring up the tool palette. I'm going to press Control 3 to do that. And then, since I'm going to be adding a custom tool, I'm going to create a new palette. I'll right-click on one of these existing tabs, and I'll choose New Palette, and I'll call this Custom, and I'll press Enter. I will then right-click on the tab, and I'll come down and choose Import Subassemblies. In the Import Subassemblies dialog box, I'll click the folder icon, and from here I'll select the Varying Slope PKT file. Let me mention that this part was created using Subassembly Composer 2016 and it's compatible with the 2016 version of Civil 3D. After selecting the part, I'll click Open and then I'll click OK to load it to my custom palette. We can now see it right here where it's available to this drawing or any new drawing. Next we'll add this to the assembly. I'm going to zoom in and then I will click the tool and I'll snap this to the outside marker on the right and left side. When I'm finished, I'll press Escape. Just for a second, let me give credit where credit's due. This custom part was created by Peter Funk, who was a member of the Autodesk development team. Peter has a knack for creating custom tools that meet most any customer demand. Let's take a look at how the tool works. Remember, we've got a 6 to 1 slope going into a 1 to 1 slope. I am going to select each of these parts and then I'll come over to my Properties palette, which is anchored to the interface. I'll drag down to the bottom, and right here we can see Slope 1, Slope 2. Slope 1 is where we're starting. I'll type 6, because that's a 6 to 1 slope. And then Slope 2, I will type 1 for 1 to 1, and I'll press Enter. And that's it. When applied, this subassembly part will measure the distance and calculate a nice transitional slope from one end of the region to the other. I'm going to select the corridor, and then we'll come up and we'll edit the targets before we rebuild. I'll click in this region, and I'm going to point the targets for the varying slope. We'll choose the existing ground surface, and I'll click OK. I'll click OK, and there it is. Let me select this again, and I'm going to edit the frequency this time. I'll click inside the region, and we'll change the frequency along tangents to every 10 feet. I'll press Enter, and then I'll come down and click OK. We can see the nice smooth transition. Let me close the palette just to free up some real estate. I will then select the corridor. Notice that if I click the grip, I can drag this to the left and right, and it will recalculate the transition. This works in cut or fill. I'll select my profile, and I'll click this grip in the middle. We'll pull this down into a cut situation. And then we'll come back over and we'll rebuild. Let's put things back. I'll open the menu, and I will take away that last grip edit. Finally, we'll take a look at this in the section editor. I'm going to select the corridor by clicking this assembly right before the transition and then I'll choose Section Editor. I am now starting at that station. And then, just for the interest of space, I'm going to zoom in on one of those daylights, and then I'll use the menu to choose Zoom to an Offset and Elevation. That'll lock this view on screen. And then, as I step forward, we can see how that daylight transitions nicely from a 6 to 1 slope to a 1 to 1 slope. When I'm finished reviewing the corridor, I'll click the X to close the Section Editor. So once again, I want to give a big thank you to Peter Funk for creating the subassembly part. If you are interested, I'm including a download link for this PKT file. It'll be in the description for this video. You can then experiment with this file yourself or do some reverse engineering if you want to. This is just another great example of how subassembly composer can be used to help solve a design challenge.